Okay, the next piece I'd like to talk to you is kind of a breakthrough in understanding how significant the biomedical issues are. <clears throat> this is something we've kind of known about for a long time. We've been looking at internationally in terms of treatment techniques and methodologies. And I don't know that we've got a whole heck of a lot better picture of what's going on here than we did 10 years ago. Um, I think this is going to be a very difficult issue for quite some time because what is becoming pretty obvious is we've got a broad range of issues within the kids, broad range of sensitivities with the kids, and there's going to be no one size fits all. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you know, we included in your packet the latest thing from autism research. Did y'all get a chance to look at that paper? Um, you know, you can look through that at your leisure. That's kind of the latest data relative to drugs and supplements and dietary changes and to what degree they seem to help and hurt. And if you study that, you're going to see it's all over the place. And it's a long list. Uh, I think if I used one word to describe most of the kids, it's biologically sensitive. And part of what we have seen is uh, a lot of intervention is too much intervention. Uh, where, you know, one of the things that's of particular concerns is methodologies to detox um, and chelate. We ha yes, ma'am. Well, as you can see, <clears throat> it's a long list of things. Every individual is going to react differently, and <clears throat> you know you have to work at it individually. Yeah. Um, you know, part of the frustration we've had, so I say our families are out there doing anything and everything, you know, trying to find out what works, which is their job, okay, and we, we support that. Um, a number of the kids have been really frustrating for us for quite a few years, because we'll see what the, the family at work program, and we'll see the kids' development continue for like a three month period, and then they'll go in and do an intensive like chelation. And we'll see the kid crash and burn. What do you mean by intensive chelation? Well, everything from drug chelation to IV chelation, okay, or even homeopathic chelation. And then we'll see the function come up, and they'll do another chelation, and we lose it. And uh, you know, understand, I'm not anti chelation. I had some cardiac problems. I did 150 IV chelations myself. Okay. Um, but what we're seeing a lot of the kids is, is not good relative to it. Um, at this point, I think the word we use is we're really cautious because of the sensitivity we see in the kids. Um, in terms of detoxing and chelating, and in terms of saying what do we feel safe about, uh, infrared saunas really are looking good. We're getting good responses from that. Uh, <clears throat> I've, I've been talking to a gal back in Tennessee who's got a clinic and she has kind of created a uh, circuit that she does with the kids and she's going to come out here in another couple weeks and meet with our, uh, our medical team and our nutritional team and look at what she's doing. But she's doing a combination of uh, infrared sauna. She's doing these things called ionic foot baths. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's, it's interesting stuff. It looks like uh, voodoo medicine, but it appears, appears to work. Uh, she thinks that the uh, electrical magnetic fields affect the kids significantly, and she, she works with that. Um, 
So we're, we, we're investigating, we continue to investigate, and it's one of those areas where I can say, boy, I don't know what really globally to do, um, except look at the kids individually, cautiously try different things, and see what works. Uh, you know, I believe in what works. You know, some works for your kid, fantastic, terrific, keep it up, do it. But if something's not working for your kid, change it. Okay? And unfortunately, we've got a lot of practitioners out there who will tell you for as long as you'll sit there and listen to it, you got to get worse before you get better. And, you know, after a few years, you might think, well, maybe it's time we should be seeing better. Okay? Um, but you as your parents need to be sensitive to all that and try to figure out <clears throat> what makes sense to you and what feels best to you and where you're where you're seeing the best results. But you know, in my opinion, this is going to continue to be a very very tough deal for for most of us. Um, part of what makes it interesting as well is looking looking at all the kids that we see, again, who are doing a broad range of things. Uh, with few exceptions, we cannot see correlations between uh, a lot of the interventions and which kids are progressing. Now, to the point that you know, a lot of the kids who have done the very best have done virtually nothing in terms of trying to address the biomedical issues. You know, some kids with absolutely horrendous diets and things, and you know, I say this this kid shouldn't be progressing, and they they do so. You know, at this point, I said we got a lot more questions than we have answers. Uh, but it obviously is significant, and we need to keep pursuing it. Another piece that is significant relative to this is we got the chicken and the egg problem. And when we look at our, our full caseload on our spectrum of kids, the lower any child is on that continuum, be they brain injured or autistic or whatever, the more physiological issues they have. And we see as the kids neurologically improve and come up, the fewer physiological issues they have. And we look at our kids who are up on the gifted, talented range, they're healthy as horses. You know, those kids can eat sugar all day long, stay up half the night, and they're fine. Okay? Our kids in the lower end of the continuum, you know, you do anything wrong and they're off the wall. Okay. So there definitely is a correlation between how efficient their brain is, how efficiently they're functioning neurologically, and how sensitive they are physiologically. So, you know, throw that into the mix. The okay. bottom line, it's significant. Uh, we keep looking for better understanding, better solutions, and you know, help advise our families as best we can. But, you know, your job is to really look critically at what's there and what you're doing and try to determine what is working for your child regardless of what you've heard is working for another child. <laughs>